I'd like to open um, the meeting, policy committee meeting of the Nashua Board of Education. It's Tuesday, April 16th, uh, 2019. We are um, opening our meeting at 6.30 p.m. Right, we're at the Nashua High School North boardroom. Um, committee members, uh, Ms. Van Twyver. Present. Uh, Mr. Mosher. I'm here. Mr. Mosher is joining us by telephone. Are you by yourself? Yes, I am. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Garino is here. Uh, Ms. Timmons yeah. is here. Uh, Ms. Hohensey is also here. Uh, Mr. Kaufman is also with us. And Ms. Um, Odin is here. Also present is um, Ms. Fitzpatrick. Yes. And Mr. Donovan. Yes. Okay. All right. So our first item on the agenda is um, policy AC, non-discrimination. Uh, we have a uh, copy of the proposed policy in the handouts. Um, do you want to speak to this, Ms. Fitzpatrick, or Mr. Donovan? Mr. Donovan would? Sure. <clears throat> um, back in uh, May, June of 2018, we, we were uh, reviewed by the um, New Hampshire DOE Office of Nutrition Program and Services. So basically, our food service program is reviewed. Um, and one of the outstanding items from that review, now keep in mind we switched um, directors. One director left in the summer. We didn't replace that director until late in the fall. So sort of getting back up to track. But one of the items, there's two items left that we need to just wrap up so that this, um, this review can be completed. And, and one of them was a, uh, to ensure that a, a, a complaint grievance policy will be created to include food service. So that's what the, that's what the genesis of this um, changes to this policy are. Um, so what we did was we, we took a look at what some other people that had the same issue on their review. This is an example of, of that. So um, that's sort of the lead. If, if you have any other questions regarding the actual policy itself, or but our intent, or at least mine and Dahlia Daigle, who's our director of food services, intent is to be able to clear this item off the review. Thank you very much. Um, I have. Uh, Mr. Mr. Kaufman, go ahead. You had your hand up. Yeah. So, Mr. Donovan, you spoke to that's intended for a complaint or grievance policy, right? That's what you said. The uh, the the driving issues were the if. Yes. So, if someone has an, if someone has an issue with something in food service, how would they deal with the grievance? Right. So. I'm looking at the title, which is non-discrimination. So when I read the title, I would not have thought grievance or complaint. So um, you know, I'm just saying, I'm, I understand the intent of what, the, what, you, what you're trying to do, but I don't believe the title helps to communicate that. Maybe you complaint and non-discrimination, I don't know if you get them merged in the heading, but I think we could do some clarification for your intent for your intended purpose. They talk about complaints. They don't, they, not all, com, yeah, I, I was wondering when you said complaints is, well, the food was really bad and I got sick. You know, I didn't know what kind of complaints. They're not really identified. Would be if you felt that you should be covered by free and reduced and you're not. Okay. Uh, that's where we received a few complaints. We Maybe three or four a year. Um, so it's, it's just specific to any complaint with food. So yeah, if, if you didn't like the food, well. 
That's, that's not going to be a, a grievance. Um, why it's actually titled non-discrimination, I mean, we sort of passed this through HR, and HR came up with putting it on this policy. To be honest with you, if we want to change the name of it, if we want to re-letter it, that's fine. My intent here is to just try to get language so that there's a, a, um, a process in place to meet the uh, requirements of the so review. When I read it, I, I really didn't have any textual changes, and, and the only question I had was actually the title. And when you to explain the purpose, then I, I see a disjointedness, that's all. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I received an email from Ms. Porter, and she has um, a change to the, uh, actually the paragraph in, the first paragraph, everything in um, blue. Actually, not a change, but she's got some changes in it. For example, uh, it says, the Nashua Board of Education affirms its commitment to and compliance with all applicable state and federal non-discrimination, uh, in accordance with state, federal, and U.S. deregulations policies, inst institutions participating in or administering USDA programs. So she wanted to add the word in before or. Um, are prohibited from discrimination based on race, color, gender, identity, including uh, gender expression, okay, sexual orientation, physical and mental disability, age, marital status, family status, genetic information, income derived, hmm, let me see, income derived from public assistance from program being the victim. I guess that was just it, in, but she had, she had rewritten this, but it looks like that's the only um, change that she had. So I think that's, that's what she had. There's, yes. a, there's another typo on the third, third blue line. Yep. It's gender identity, you're missing a space before the parentheses. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Greeno? Yes. Um, we have a civil rights um, policy, was there any consideration to putting something in that about uh, the USD food service program? Uh, not that I'm aware. Well, I think we ought to check it out to see that maybe something needs to be done. But, I mean, and you said Dana did this? Ms. O'Gara? Yes. Because this, I mean, this, I would never think to look under non-discrimination to find out what I should do if, if my kid doesn't get what they want in food service. That's the only thing. Mr. Um, Moshe, do you have a comment or a question? No, I don't have a question, but I do have a comment. And uh, I read this um, very carefully and thoroughly. And I see it as a matter of uh, what you would call boilerplate, uh, except for the, uh, the few little things there in the blue. But uh, I think that this is covered uh, pretty much under the general guidelines of the, uh, the, uh, the United States government and the fact that we're not allowed to discriminate on, on these uh, various uh, things here. Uh, however, I listened to uh, uh, Howard before, and they talk about other things that uh, may may apply, <clears throat> but uh, it's in a different uh, different area completely. And uh, I don't disagree with him. I'm just saying that uh, it's not included in this particular item. This is just uh, that uh, the, uh, the general things that we're not allowed to discriminate against, and it's covered in. Uh, pretty much every other uh, area where we have uh, made a non-discrimination statement, which we've posted in all of our other uh, areas uh, and policies and, and the uh, things that we hang up in the, uh, in the 
um, uh, notices in the uh, in the schools. So I think that this is uh, pretty much uh, on the money, and uh, I don't see any problem with it whatsoever uh, for what it contains and what it's supposed to be. And that's exactly what it is. It's a non-discrimination statement by the USDA, which is a branch of the federal government. And it has nothing to do with uh, anything else. I don't see anything that replies to, you know, to uh, contractual, contractual or... Uh, other uh, other things, you know. If you have a complaint with the food, you complain to the school, and uh, the director of the uh, uh, food service will uh, will attend to it. But this is a matter of the federal government, and uh, has nothing to do with the quality of the of the food, except that uh, you know the way that we are uh, to receive it, pay for it, and uh, and and serve it. Not that uh, it has anything to do with uh, any anything else. And as far as non-discrimination, uh, if there is a uh, problem with it, the uh, the I believe in the uh, notices of the thing here that gives you a bunch of uh, a bunch of things on Title uh, Nine and Ten, uh, Americans with Disabilities Act, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And there's a whole uh, uh, menu list of uh, legal references that contain all of the other information. That if you have a complaint, it tells you where to where to complain. Uh, it has nothing to do with uh, the fact that this is what we have to post uh, so that people know that we cannot discriminate on the basis of uh, race, color, uh, sex orientation, blah, blah, blah. So I'd say nothing prohibitive or unusual about this, uh, this notice. Thank you, Mr. Mosher. Ms. Van Twyver, then Ms. Hohensey. I move to accept policy AC as uh, presented in our packet with two additions, the word in between participating in or administration and also the uh, uh, space, which is a editorial thing, between identity and the left paragraph including. Okay. Um, I'll second it. Um, no. Ms. Hohensey? I was wondering if um, we should put non-discrimination and complaint process. That way, when they're looking at the, uh, the list of policies online, it'll be in the header, and they'll know to look in it um, if they have a complaint or an inquiry. Whereas if it's not, I don't, I don't know that I would look unless I had that in the in the header. It's just a suggestion. It, it's. Uh... I think that would be confusing because um, we already have a, a complaint, a different complaint. So so these complaints are associated with discrimination. So I think that's that's the idea. So if we put complaint there, then I think it would, in in the title, we we have other policies that have complaint. Uh, Mr. Kaufman, and then Ms. Van Twyver, you had your hand up, so Mr. Kaufman first. Thank you. To, Ms. Van Twyver alluded to something before about a civil rights policy or something like that. If I remember correctly, you know, there's categories, the A's, the B's, whatever. The B's are board policies. Um, the A's are sort of district-wide, and if I'm not mistaken, I believe there is a non-discrimination policy in the A's, so which doesn't break out in any specific way. It's a, you know, it's kind of like an umbrella statement for the district. And it sounds to me with the intent that perhaps this, including the USDA as part of that existing, other existing policy is certainly worthwhile looking into because now you've got it spread out where I think it would be better for the public, for all of us, if it were in just one place. Ms. Van Twyver? Uh, Mr. Donovan, the complaints that you've had were not discriminatory, were they? They were just that people didn't understand whether they were had the right information or something like that? The ones I'm aware of, correct. What? Yeah. They're discriminating? No, they weren't, not, they weren't they were discrimination. Not discriminating. Then I, I find that um, the statement wouldn't, well, maybe somebody in the future might discriminate, I guess, but... Um, I think it, uh, I would suggest that the chair and the uh, 
superintendent check into the other uh, policies uh, on civil on civil rights and see if this needs to be included in it. Uh, Mr. Moshe, did you have a comment? Yes. Go ahead, sir. This is a USDA non-discrimination statement. It has nothing to do but uh, uh, with uh, uh, changing a, a, a policy, but this is to be included verbatim because it does have the information in here uh, what to do and where to write or call or whatever. Um, to the Federal uh, uh, Relay Service. Uh, this is the uh, Department of Agriculture, and uh, as such, it should be included in the policy verbatim so that uh, it has a uh, particular place in the policy, but not to uh, start making a whole bunch of uh, additions or rearranging things, because then it becomes even more confusing than what it may be as it is. Thank you, Mr. Mosher. Mr. Kaufman? So my last comment alluded to, you know, the A section, and I, you know, obviously taking another look, this is the policy I was thinking about, so I would say it is in the right place. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think we're, uh, unless anyone else has any questions or comments, um, go ahead. I just want to make sure that it's clear that this is um, on a c compliance issue. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Yep. I think we're ready to vote on, on the motion, which is to accept the policy with the minor changes. Um, Ms. Van Twyver? Yes. Mr. Mosher? Yes. Mr. Greeno votes yes. The motion carries three to zero. I want to welcome um, our board president, um, Heather, Ms. Heather Raymond, who's just joined us. Thank you. I apologize for my lateness. No problem. Okay, our next item on the agenda is another policy, D. JB, Purchasing Procedures. And we have that in our packet with uh, the changes in red. Does uh, anyone from administration, go ahead, Mr. Donovan. Okay, the next five uh, policies slash procedures listed, the genesis of all these are um, Currently going on, the state is doing federal funds compliance monitoring at, at most of the school districts, especially at the school districts that are receiving federal grant money. Most districts in New Hampshire receive some. We obviously are larger, receive significantly more money. So they came down uh, in February, uh, sent an auditor, and the auditor did a compliance monitoring. So it wasn't an audit per se, but it was a compliance monitoring. They're doing these statewide. It's not just in Nashua they're doing them. I believe the state had an audit from the federal government. They were then told, you guys need to move this on down. Um, so basically, in the package, I believe you will see the, the New Hampshire DOE federal fiscal monitoring report. Yes, okay, it. so it was in there, and so basically, this is sort of the first step in responding to this. Um, there's a couple of items, one or two items that we would need to come back probably next month and deal with. Um, but basically, what I did was these next set of policies, and we'll obviously go through them one by one. If there was an existing policy, because what we did, we shared the existing policy. The auditor reviewed it and then made a comment whether it met the needs of the federal guidelines or not. If it didn't, then we had to go back, look at the federal guidelines slash regulations, compare them to our policies, and make the suggested changes. So that's, that's what most of this is. Um, and like I said, some of them may be more procedures than policies, but I'm not going to get in an argument, what do you, you can make them a policy, that's up to the board, not up, to, I'm just 
bringing them forward. So the first one is purchasing. Now we had two purchasing policies um, that were, okay. Yeah, one was one of the old numbers, 7221, was that it? Okay. 7021. So that was, that one obviously hadn't been changed for a long time. Um, and then there was uh, the other one, which was pretty simple. It was, which one was that? DJB. Mm -hmm. It had like three paragraphs. So basically what we're suggesting is we take DJB, call it purchasing procedures, and we put those two policies into one. Um, and so that's why when you look at the DJB listed in all the red, um, it's a combination of those two policies. This policy does meet the guidelines that the, uh, the state requires. I mean, the reality is, I won't know that 100% sure until it gets approved. We then need to forward it back up to the state and the state will sort of bless it one way or another. So if there's an issue with it, we'll certainly get it back. Mm -hmm. um, but as just to let you know how I did this, I took the federal regulations, I took the state uh, monitoring report. I took another copy of an item that the city had just finished putting together because they need to do this also. Uh, they had some help from their legal department. So I took all those, put them together, and sort of <coughs> created what we have in front of us. Thank you, Mr. Donovan. Um, so uh, I guess the first one we're going to take up is DJB. Mr. Motion, do you have any comments or questions on uh, policy DJB purchasing procedures? Did you get a copy of that? I, I have a copy right in front of me right now. Okay, great. And uh, I look at this and I see that uh, part of this is uh, something that we had put together some time ago uh, with uh, our British friends who sat on the, uh, on the uh, committee with me, and we used to bounce these things back and forth between us. But I see that uh, Mr. Donovan has done a, a very a good job of combining 7021 and uh, DJB, and uh, I think that uh, unless the, the state can pick up something that got by me, uh, I'd uh, okay it and uh, let him uh, send it up to the state to see if they approve it. And at the same time, we can be guided by, uh, by the policy as uh, uh, agreed on by the committee, and uh, we can eliminate uh, 7021. Thank you, Mr. Mosher. Does anyone else have any questions or comments regarding this um, DJB? Ms. Van Twyver, then Mr. Kaufman. Mr. Chairman, I move to accept DJB as presented in our packet with all the changes required and move it forward uh, to the full board for approval. Okay. Mr. Kaufman, did you? There's did you a second. Oh, I'm, I'll second. Thanks. I have, thanks. I have a couple of questions. Um, if I can address Mr. Donovan. Yes. Okay. Thanks, Mr. Donovan. So, in the first red paragraph where you talk about things that are not put out to bid, and you said price quotations will be solicited. I know when we go to bid, we always try and do a minimum of three, and later in the document, you, you have a reference, you know, try and get adequate number of qualified sources, three or more. So does that three or more, is it intended to apply to this paragraph as well? I think this paragraph was a more general paragraph. Um, and then when, like, 
as you as you read it, I'm sure there's the the, the different levels. Um, so that was more just of a, a if you're going to buy something for six hundred dollars, we expect you to get a couple quotes, but you don't necessarily have to get three. So it's all a, a spending level. Okay, thank you. And if I may, so I have a question because it, it's mentioned several times, and I'm just trying to understand. So in uh, one, two, the third paragraph, black paragraph down that starts with the business administrator, it's in black ink, it's toner. Then it says slash chief operating officer. And then again, it's, do we have a business administrator or is it just you as chief operating officer? I guess I'm curious about the titles because if we don't have the title, should we be referencing it? And I just, I don't know if we have a business, honestly. I thought that was you, so. It, well, good question. I mean, my title is Chief Operating Officer because of, I think, the size of the district. Most school districts have a business administrator. Um, I think previous to me, the couple people that had the job previous to me were called business administrators. So I, I just kind of, it, it had business administrator in there, but since the, the role has changed over the last, I think, 15 years, um, to this, if the district decided to go back to a business administrator, call it that, this would cover it. It's not that big a deal one way or another. Okay, so, and you guys can do whatever you want. So in that case, I'll just point out at the very bottom of the page, where you, uh, third line up from the bottom, there's a comma between uh, chief operating officer and business administrator. So if you're saying they're interchangeable, which is what I thought I understand. Right. So you'd need to make that correction okay. for consistency. And I do have something else, if I may. Cool. Um, so it speaks that the business administrator, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, from the bottom, that same paragraph where we just were. It says, shall have the authority to reject or award bids solicited under the appropriate purchasing procedures. So my question is, where are those purchasing procedures? I think I know the answer to the question, but where we should document where these procedures exist. The vendors need to know as well as uh, somebody in the district who might be looking to follow the procedure if they put out a bid. So if I can maybe ask a leading question, if that's okay. Mr. Donovan, is this intended to be the business operations manual? That's where you keep that stuff? In, in, yeah, we, we do have the, the business operations manual and we do talk, we do speak to it in a more procedural manner than a policy manner. Right, but these are talking about procedures, not policies. So I, it seems like that would be the appropriate place for them. And I'm just trying to confirm that that is where they would be, because that makes sense to me that that's where they, I think that's where they are now, quite frankly. And if that is the case, then I would suggest that the committee add a reference to that document. I mean, well, I guess it is a legal references because these are the procedures that are used to govern the purchasing of something. So I'm su suggesting to the committee that under the legal references section, that the, the name of the, um, the business office manual, I think that's the correct name, be added. Additionally, since you do have a reference to the city of Nashua, um, it's in here somewhere, the revised ordinances, et cetera, you probably wanna add that to your legal references. And then my other question is, is there a federal reference that, I mean, the federal, uh, you said compliance review, is that the language you used, Mr. Donovan? So is there language about federal compliance review that needs to be incorporated here so we show our intent to be compliant with that? Well, even and, by mentioning it, it's sort of proactive. Yeah, we heard you, we considered it when we did this, so. Well, it, it, yeah, I mean, if you, if you look at the paragraph above the one you're mentioning in red where it says all procurements made with federal funds will be consistent with 2 CFR 200, 317, or 326. So that's the section of the okay. federal regulation. So it's, it's in the text if you want to put it in the um, 
I think consistency, we, te we tend to, even though if there is a reference in text, we tend to repeat it to, in that section. So I would say to suggest to the committee that you, you grab that reference as well. Um, that's, I have one other thing. Oh, there's a one, two, three, the fourth paragraph from the bottom in red. Most of it's been uh, struck. Yeah, first page, sorry. The fourth, one, two, three, fourth paragraph from the bottom starts with the business administrator shall maintain. That is stricken. But the next sentence, to the extent practical, the school district, I'm suggesting the word shall be added, shall purchase. I think you're missing a, an action word, as it were. Yeah. And I think, oh, I have one last thing, if I can. Um, the right. very last red paragraph where it speaks that we award contracts only to responsible contractors possessing the ability to perform uh, I think, do I'm we sorry, need to on mention? Page two? Well, let's, let's, I'm sorry, can on we go page back, two. Can we go back to that sentence? That's not a complete sentence. Um, even if you add the word shall. Um, yeah, it is. To the extent practical, the school district purchase shall, shall equitably among qualified suppliers shall. Shall. The, the school shall district purchase, purchase, purchase. Shall purchase, okay. Shall purchase equitably. Okay, so that's where you want shall before the word purchase? That's my suggestion. Okay. Yeah. So, to the extent practical, the school district shall purchase equitably. It's still a little bit, it's still a little bit, uh, shall purchase, um, shall make purchases equitably, I would imagine, would be better grammar. Um, it, because you're saying shall purchase, purchase what? So it's, I would say, shall uh, make purchases equitably among qualified. So, so I would add three words, shall make purchases equitably among qualified suppliers. Um, go ahead, go on to so, your next. So the last, one. and the last thing that I have. The very last paragraph in red, it speaks to school district awards contracts only to responsible contractors. And I'm, I know that, uh, and here's, it's kind of like a question page I'm two. asking on page two, the very last paragraph at the bottom of the page. Do we need to say, and maybe Mr. Donovan's more familiar because he does almost all the contracting for this stuff to ensure that they meet the background check requirements. I know elsewhere we talk about that as a requirement for vendors? Do we need to reinforce it here? Is someone a responsible? It's the word responsible. I don't know what that really means, you know. Approved contractors. If they're approved, then I have more confidence that I know they're going to be consistent, especially when it comes to the background checks, because that's a big concern to us. So it's, Mr. Donovan, what do you think? Um, is that covered by the second sentence where we, we considerations given to contractor integrity, compliance with public policy, record of past performances? It, it might be redundant to put something there. Um, so we're, so we're, it, it's kind of confusing over here. We're talk, so you're talking about responsible contractors possessing the ability to perform successfully. So, so you're talking about their the services that they're, that they're uh, giving in the contract. Um, so Mr. Coffin was referring to background checks, which is something different, and I would imagine would be... Um, would we be, don't do background checks right, on right, all our contracts. Right, so this is actually referring to the services rendered for the contracts. It's not really... Yes. Right. So I, I, think it's, I think that would confuse the issue if we added background checks or something like that. Just asking a question, yep. that's all. Um, but, I, but the other, the other changes that Mr. Kaufman had, which was add reference to business manual procedures under legal references and also add the federal mm -hmm. code. Um, do you see any problem doing that? No, that's fine. Okay. Um, what about, okay, board members, go ahead, Ms. Van Twyver. Um, if we're finished doing the edits, can we go through this to see what we agreed upon? 
Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, sure. I think so. Yeah, yeah. Because the motion was to accept it as it is. Right, right. So we can we can uh, add friendly amendments to the to the. Uh, what do you think? Well, what I what, what I have done in the past is that I go through and I list all the th things that exactly as it's supposed to be, and then move to uh, accept it as amended. Okay. All right. So. Um, <laughs> The uh, the changes that I had um, were those um, changes to the references, add reference to business manual procedures, and a reference to the um, federal um, federal laws. The other change I had was uh, to one on the, more. I'm sorry. One I'm more. Sorry. Oh, one more. The Nashua revised ordinances. The Nashua revised ordinances. Okay. That's enough. Okay. And the other, the other change I had was on the first page was uh, where one, two, three, four, fourth uh, paragraph from the bottom. To the extent practicable, the school district shall make purchases equitably among qualified suppliers. And uh, that's what I have so far. I don't know what the other changes were. Did we not agree upon the uh, business administrator? Oh yes, wherever yes, that's that is right. used, it should be right. taken put, out. Right, right at the bottom, bottom where it says "chief operating officer," put a slash instead of a comma. Right. Business administrator. Okay. Take it out, business administrator. I don't think that's to remove it. it. Oh, remove was that don't it? Don't have a business administrator, and I believe was that your intent? Or no, I just thought, it, it, like I said, personally, it's not a big deal to me one way or another. But right. the person, when Mr. Conrad was in my position, he was called a business administrator. Right. And then they changed it. Right. So, so I, think, I think Mr. Coffin said for consistency to have business administrator slash chief op operating officer consistent through the document. Mm -hmm. Was that your... You know, my, you my, already have that in there. My point was for consistency, but I understand Ms. Van Twyver's point, which right. was but, part of my question. Right. Do you need to mention both one or the other? Right. So I, that's so, that's on you right. guys. That's right. not me. I'm just bringing it up. As, right. So maybe Ms. Van Twyver so would so suggest that I, that get pulled. I don't know. Well, I, we don't have one, but that's maybe you're going to get demoted sometime. I don't know. <laughs> Well, if that happens, I probably won't be around. But yeah, well, anyways. <laughs> but uh, if you do hire one, but either I, like I said, you can have just chief operating officer or the slash. Either it doesn't matter to me. What, whatever you, whatever the committee wants. It doesn't matter to me. Doesn't matter. Okay, so I just want to know what we agreed upon. Why, why don't we have it consistent? Business administrator slash chief operating officer. There is more the document. than two, there are three different places that I saw. Right. So wherever it appears, that right. needs to be changed or fixed. Right. And Can I ask a question? Go ahead, Ms. Fitzpatrick. In some places, it lists chief operating officer, then business administrator. In another place, it flips it. So what you're asking is that it's consistent. So consistent. It, got it. Okay. Just making sure. Yep. yep. Okay. And um, I don't recall any other changes. Ms. Okay. Um, Ms. Um, Ms. Raymond, did you say something? Oh, I was saying, so now would be the point where someone on the committee would move to amend, to accept the, to amend the original motion to accept these changes. Jesus, Larry, Josephine. Right? Okay. Right. Does, do you want to, would well, you like to? Uh, for me. I move to um, accept the amendments that were made this evening to this um, DJB. Okay. All right, I'll, I will second. Okay, so I think we're ready to vote on the motion to accept DJB with the... On the uh, amendment. On, on the, okay, we're ready to vote for the amendment, the, uh, the changes. Uh, Ms. Ms. Van Twyver? Yes. Mr. Mosher? Yeah. yeah. Mr. Garino votes yes, so the, the changes are, are accepted. Uh, now on the uh, on the main motion to accept DJB uh, and send to the full board for approval with the amendments, um, Ms. Ms. Van Twyver. Yes. Mr. Mosher. Yeah. Mr. Greeno votes yes. 
Motion carries three to zero. Okay, that was DJB. Uh, now we have 7021, which is now redundant, well, will, will be redundant. Um, so I can entertain a motion to rescind uh, 7021. I make the motion to rescind 721 as being redundant. I'll, I'll second. Sorry, 7021. 7021. Okay. On the motion to rescind 7021, Ms. Van Twyver? Yes. Ms. DeMosher? Yes. Mr. Garino votes yes. Motion carries 3 to 0. Okay. We are moving right along. We're moving at a fast pace. Uh, and we're going to move to uh, policy DA fiscal management plan. And that is in our packet. It's a one page with some procedures on the back. And I'm going to uh, turn the floor over to either Mr. Donovan or Ms. Fitzpatrick if they would like to um, say some words on this. Mr. Cer Donovan? Certainly. Um, in the uh, document, the, the fiscal monitoring report on the second page, item number six, uh, they reviewed the cash management policy, and we showed them the three policies. Their comment was, while these policies cover important information, they do not meet all the requirements of 200.302B6 and... 200305. So I obviously went and looked at those. All that language pretty much says that we must establish cash management procedures for receipt of funds from federal and state grants. So this one, um, since we, a lot of school districts handle their cash, daily cash themselves, our money we put in with the city accounts. So it's not like we I don't manage a cash account, a bank account. That money um, is managed at the city level. So basically what you have is the one line change in the fiscal management plan DA that says we will establish cash management pr procedures. And then on the back of it is these are the cash management procedures. Now, to be honest with you, I did not write this, but a individual at the city wrote this, I believe. I can't tell you the exact person, but they work in the legal department. So basically, I just took this and said, here are the cash procedures. Since um, they had already written it, I figured why reinvent the wheel, especially since they manage the cash in essence anyway. We track it. We take care of it. We do the accounting for it, but the actual cash receipts get deposited into accounts at the city level. Thank you, Mr. Donovan. Um, so this looks like a pretty easy, easy one here. We're just adding established cash management procedures for receipt of funds from federal and state grants. We already have procedures in the business office manual. Does the... Uh, Anyone in the, uh, Ms. Van Twyver, then Mr. Kaufman. Mr. Donovan, so these were written by the city. They're probably the same for this process for the city, but they are included in your uh, policy manual, on your procedures manual. Well, they, they will be. I'm in the process of putting together a, a manual just for Grants. That's the re the total request that the state would like us to do is have a grants manual. So the city has done most of that work. Yep. So I'm working. I'm sort of using what's already been created and and making it fit the school district. Okay, but it will be in your records. Yes. This. That's all the, I want. What I'd suggest is yep. this is actual procedure. I think this is way too much for a policy. This back page. And we just there's a difference between uh, administrative policies, uh, procedures, and um, 
What are we, the Board of Education Board procedures? Board policies, exactly. No, they're not. I don't know how many times I have tried to explain to you that procedures follow policy. We have procedures and the administration has procedures, okay? But this is going to be part of his. This is nothing that we have to be worried at the policy level. Mr. Kaufman. Thank you. So since we've just established that this procedure is <coughs> administrative and managed, if I can use that word, by the chief operating officer, that's what we're using is what was given to us as evidence. I'm just... No, I, I think it was established by someone in the legal department, wasn't it? This, these procedures, that's what and Mr. Yeah, Donovan this, said. This, this back page was written right. by one of the... Right. So that, that's who established this, these procedures. Right, but Mr. Donovan manages the implementation thereof, and it's in his business office manual, which was... Well, it will be, yes. It will, well, what you sent out, it's in there. So all I'm suggesting is that, like we did in the previous discussion, that the legal reference include a reference, because that is the place where it's going to be, right? The business office manual. And also, there were specific references to the federal CFRs that Mr. John Donovan just shared with us. I think those CFRs well, we're should we're be also listed as part of this policy under legal references. Well, I... And then I have one other question. Ms. Ms. Van Twyver and then Ms. Is, um, I don't see any need for putting that in here. It's our responsibility to see that the procedures are there. It's not our responsibility to see where they're put. So if he wants to put them in, in file B, he can put it in file B or book B or A, B or whatever. That's his, his ballywag. It's our responsibility just to see that there are procedures. Ms. Raymond, did you have your hand up? I had one more thing. I'll uh, happy to wait for Ms. 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 Raymond, Raymond uh, would like thing. to say something. Oh, yes, thank you. Um, I was just noting on um, some of our policies at the bottom, instead of saying um, instead of saying legal references, they have something called like related documents, or um, and there they would put if it's like another policy or a procedure or something that's not like a legal law, like a law. So that was my only thought. But I, I'm convinced by Ms. Van Twyver's um, explanation. So, okay. I take it back. All right. Does anyone else have anything to add? Mr. Kaufman. Thank you. So the title is Fiscal Management Plan. And then the addition, the added text, there's a change bar. The district financial plan seeks to achieve the following goals. What is the district fiscal management plan? Is there a document? This, this looks like it was written back in 2007. Well, this was added. There's a change bar there. I don't change know what bar. was changed on that line, but I am asking the question, what is the district financial management plan that this document refers to? Well, I, 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 think, I think that's slightly uh, confusing there. It's, there's not a written fiscal management plan. These are items in your plan that you should do. Use the best available techniques. Provide timely and appropriate information. So this is a policy. You could call it the fiscal management policy if you'd like, but there's not another written document on top of this, no. I'm just curious what was the, I mean, this was written, well, this is 12 years ago. So if I read it as it is now, I'm looking for a, fiscal, a district fiscal management plan, I am looking for, based upon what I am reading, I am looking for a written district fiscal management plan. That's the title of the policy. And it says that the plan will do, has, has, will have these goals. So you have to figure out if there's no plan, then don't say there's a plan and it. How about objective? Why bother? Or management objective seeks to achieve the following goal? I, I, think, I think we could just say fiscal management. We don't have to say the word plan. Board recognizes the importance of excellent, excellent fiscal management in managing public resources to achieve the goals of the educational plan in the district. So I know that people might be looking for now, running around looking for an educational plan, but 
Um, the district fiscal manage, the district seeks to achieve the following goals. We can take out fiscal management plan if it's confusing. Just say the district seeks to achieve the following goals. How about we could, the, and we could just call it fiscal management. How about the district plans all we need. seeks to achieve the following fiscal goals? Put fiscal at the front of goals so you're not we talking can do about that. The, the district seeks to achieve the following fiscal goals. Just, just so I'm clear on my copy, we're crossing out the word plan in the title and management plan there on that one sentence before the bullets. Right. Okay. The one, the, the introductory sentence is the district seeks to achieve the following fiscal goals. Okay. Right. Oh, sorry, I circled and moved that on mine. Thank you. Okay. And then the title is just fiscal management. Right. Great. Thank you for your patience. Mr. Mosher, do you have any comments? I, uh, I agree with taking out the word plan, but I would uh, insert between fiscal management as they put the word resources, fiscal resource management. <clears throat> and then in the, uh, you know, to put it so that it includes the, uh, the second page uh, and say, uh, in, well, in the uh, references there on the bottom, uh, board approval and a uh, uh, business office manual reference. Okay. So that's the only thing that I would uh, I would do. But I take out the word plan because there's not really a plan. And uh, if you're making a plan, then you have to have goals and objectives and uh, all kinds of things. They make it a lot more complicated than what it really is, because the, uh, the whole thing is contained in that uh, uh, page there where it says Federal Cash Management Procedures, and that has a lot of the references there with the uh, Code of Federal Regulations, uh, paragraph 200, uh, 305, and so on. So all the references are there for what you want, but just to mention that uh, you it is contained in the business office manual, and put that uh, also the, with the board approval uh, portion, so that there be no haunting and poking and looking around for things. Everything is uh, in one place and available for scrutiny. Thank you, Mr. Mosher. Does anyone on the committee have any objections to the to these changes by Mr. Mosher? Well, my. Um I thought we decided that there'd be a reference down at the bottom to the fiscal, the federal cash management procedures, and that's it. That that's. Well, Mr. Mr. Mo Mr. Mosher um, suggested adding business office manual also under well, references. Oh, that's fine, but it's not including this whole second page. It's just a reference. Oh, it's to just thing. a reference. Just I just want to make you understand yeah. Yeah, yeah, what he's yeah. talking about. And, and you had another clear. reference. What was the other reference? To? Well, it's the federal cash management procedures federal. found in the business whatever office procedure manual. Yeah, that's that's the reference that should go down on the bottom. Okay. okay. Um, all right. So I think we're in agreement about the changes to the title, fiscal resources management. We're in agreement with uh, the second paragraph the district fiscal the district seeks to achieve, seeks to achieve the following the, fiscal the following fiscal goals, goals. And, and then we're in agreement with the uh, references to the federal what was your reference again I apologize uh, it's on the reverse it's on the reverse oh, okay federal cash found in the in the CFR huh? first paragraph mr. Guarino title Federal cash management. Oh, federal cash management. Okay. Yeah, procedures found in the. Okay, federal cash. Document that Miss. Uh, yeah, Miss Patrick's mentioned. Okay. All right. Yep. Go ahead, Mr. Kaufman. Did you have a comment? I, I just wanted to confirm. So it's my understanding now that the example given to us by Mr. Donovan is not going to be in the actual policy, but only a reference to it in that 
related documents or whatever you end up calling that particular thing at the bottom. Exactly. Uh, okay. That's exactly. Yeah, that's, yeah, thank you. So. Ms. Ms. Van Twyver. I move the uh, adoption of policy DA as presented in our packet plus the additions that we've mentioned this evening and send it forth to the board, full board for approval. As amended. Okay. Um, was that a second? Did you second that, Mr. Mosher? Yes, I did. Okay, thank you. Don't think as an AD, as amended. Okay, and as amended, okay. Moved by Ms. Van Twyver. I'm tired already. Mm -hmm. What time is it? <laughs> Okay, on the motion to approve policy uh, DA, uh, Ms. Van Twyver? Yes. Mr. Mosher? Yes. Mr. Greeno votes yes. Motion carries uh, three to zero. All right, so that was, that was DA. And we're going to move on to uh, policy GBEB, -E Employee Conflict of Interest. And that is a one-page document that was included in the packet mm -hmm. with uh, one recommended change in red, uh, sort of to the, almost to the middle of the page. Does anyone from ad admin want to speak to this, Mr. Donovan? Yes, um, once again, going back and looking at the fiscal monitoring report, um, what was given to the auditor was not the employee conflict of interest, but the board member conflict of interest. Oh. So the auditor read that and said, well, it doesn't meet, it meet the requirements of such and such because it requires a conflict to also cover employees. So we have two. We have a board member conflict of interest and we have an employee conflict of interest. So I read through CFR, the one noted here, and it basically said we need to add a, a sentence related to what would happen if an employee didn't follow this. So this is Dan Donovan's words. Feel free to change them as long as you basically get the same uh, same result. If we can put that in the existing policy, that should keep the uh, the state happy. Thank you, Mr. Donovan. Does anyone on the committee have any questions or comments regarding the changes? I like it. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mosher. Uh, Mr. Kaufman. Thanks. I have several comments. Uh, just the very first sentence, the, the word will, I suggest you change the word to shall. Um, and then in the next sentence, the word substantial. That's very subjective. And um, I, I just have a problem with that. I think it needs to be identified. And I'm, I don't have a suggestion on this one, but I'm just saying that the, you know, in, an employee shall not have a personal financial interest, a business, business interest, or any other obligation that creates substantial conflict. I would say they shouldn't have any conflict. And the word substantial says that to me that some can exist. And I would prefer to have none and maybe deal with exceptions that are minor rather than you know, something that allows for anything and up to a substantial conflict. And if you want to comment on that or you want me to just give you the rest of my feedback, that's up to you. Well, I, I think that... Uh... There, there are some, um, there are some business interests in in which people do have conflicts, but they're not substantial and they're allowed in in government. Uh, if there are a lot of times, it's a small thing or a minor <laughs> thing, or, or, um, so I, I think that's the reason why it says substantial. Um, so, if you say that it creates a conflict, any conflict, we may, be, uh, we may be overstepping right there. Well, the way the state legislature deals with it, they require, as if I recall correctly, the state reps to reveal all conflicts. Right. But that and doesn't say they're not allowed. Me. That doesn't no, say I, they're not I, allowed. I'm 
trying to make that point. Right. As long as it's declared, it's allowed. So right. I think we should have we should know the conflict, and then the superintendent should be able to evaluate that and determine if there's a problem or not. But I would argue that full disco disclosure of any conflict should be the norm here. And that's, a let the super that's a different issue. This is, this, this is dealing with uh, whether they have, a, uh, talking about whether they have a, a substantial conflict or not. And I'm uh, suggesting I don't know, any conflict I, is a I, conflict. I, I don't know if, if if it reading on here, if it uh, if it says anything further that about uh, declaring those, go ahead, Ms. Raymond. Right. If if you read to paragraph two, sentence two, it says an employee who believes she or he has or may have a conflict of interest shall immediately disclose it. Oh, so it's already there. So it's there. So okay. they're required to disclose any conflict of interest that they think they might have. And so that would cover it. And then the superintendent or its designee would be the one to determine if it's a substantial conflict of interest or not. And, and I would imagine that the state of New Hampshire has uh, specific rules that the, that the um, municipalities have, must follow regarding conflicts of interest. Right. And then if you keep reading it, the bulleted things, these are the like absolutely no questions are significant conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. But I think the policy as written allows for um, things other than these four bulleted items to also be determined to be a conflict of interest based on the circumstances. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think it's good. Okay, so go ahead, Mr. Kaufman. Thank you. So the way this is written right now, that this conflict of interest shall be immediately disclosed to the, in writing to the superintendent or designee. In my opinion, it should be the superintendent and another identified person. Mr. Donovan, you happen to be here tonight. I would recommend you as the chief operating officer as the most suitable alternative person because the way this is written, he could ask anybody to do this. And I think it belongs at the executive level and it should be either, in my opinion, the superintendent or the chief operating officer that makes this determination. Uh, the assistant superintendents deal with academic issues, not matters like this. So I would suggest uh, if you want to give the superintendent a backup on this, that it be the chief operating officer, and we're very specific who deals with this type of issue. Yeah, these, we've been, these have been approved. What we're doing is we're going back and rewriting things that you know, we've had in existence 2005, 2009, 2016. And we're 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 kind of picking away at at this. It's, it seems to be, be working okay the way it is. Um, so I, I I'm not I'm not uh, comfortable making more con more changes. I I, I, I uh, agree with you when you say an employee shall, and I'm I'm willing to ask the, the committee if they would uh, substitute shall instead of will in the first sentence. But as far as Getting into the weeds and, and starting picking this apart, I think uh, I'm not really comfortable doing that because I think they're there for a reason. Um, if I could continue. Go ahead. So that's what happens in a policy committee. It's, it's a proposal and mm -hmm. everything right. on the page is up for discussion. Right, but you're so, not, you're so not, just you're making not, my point. You're not on this committee shh, shh, and we have a lot of work to do. Hey, 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 okay? hey. All right. So, Mr. Garino. He yes. has a right to express his I, opinion. I know he has a right, but I, have, I am the chairman of this committee, and I want us to get things done. I don't want us to start going off onto tangents, okay? If so I may continue. I, oh, go ahead. So I have a personal, I, uh, have personal observation of something that occurred when I was a substitute teacher several years ago. I do not know if this teacher is still employed by the district, but I can tell you that I observed a teacher, I won't say what school, I won't say even their gender, conducting private business at the school during school hours. So for me, I believe this policy should extend in a, in a stated you know, criteria of conflict something along the lines that you cannot conduct private business during uh, the workday. If, 
Go ahead, you go ahead Ms. Vin. Yeah, uh, uh, Ms. Vin Twyver and then Mr. Mosher. If you start listing that thing as an, uh, you'd have nine million things that, that need to be listed then, what people can't do. So I, I think that this policy is good the way it is. I don't think you need to expand upon it. It says you, you can't have a personal financial interest or business interest or anything other obligation that creates a substantial conflict. That, if you had brought that situation up to the principal, then they would have justification through GBEB to go after the person. I, Mr. I don't think that Mr. Moshe was next. Mr. Moshe, did you, did you uh, want to have a comment, sir? I comment, I say that this policy is fine just the way it is. I don't see why we have to change will to shall, because that, uh, that uh, makes a change in it uh, also. Uh, will is, uh, is a very definite thing. It does not have a personal financial interest, a business interest, or any other obligation that creates a substantial conflict with the proper discharge of assigned duties and responsibilities or a conflict uh, with what is in the best interest of the district. I don't see a, anything that has to be changed in this at all. The only thing that we're going to do is uh, add the, uh, the, the sentence in red because the, uh, the change um, had mentioned school board members and they would change it, says it includes all employees. So it's fine just the way it is. It's worked uh, all of these years and was last uh, approved uh, in uh, 2016. What are we going to do now? We're going to change something now and, uh, and, and make it different? For what? I don't see it. Thank you, Mr. Mosher. Um, Ms. Timmons. Hi, thank you, Chair. Um, in March 2019, early March of 2019, this was looked at by the DOE, and there wasn't anything wrong with the policy, so I agree with Mr. Mosher and Ms. Van Triver. This, this particular policy should, is good just the way it is, with no changes. That's my only comment. Mr. Kaufman, then Ms. Van Twyver. Thank you. Um, I have one other piece of feedback. Um, the State uh, Department of Education issued a code of conduct um, document back, I think it was October, November time frame. That deals with credentialed employees. That was something we talked about at the HR meeting the other day, that, and I specifically asked uh, Ms. O'Gara if some of those things should find their way into our policies, and it was her recommendation that they should. I think at a minimum, when it says this code of conduct, that would exclude the state DOE code of conduct, if you are literal here, and I think the state DOE code of conduct should apply to our employees. It's intended as an employee code of conduct. They even go further specific in terms of primarily credentialed employees. I think that needs to be referenced here so that we're now using that recently provided code of conduct that the, the DOE, Mr. Um, Marku is actually on that committee, if I recall. I think there was a lot of hard work that went into that. It should be reflected in this policy. Ms. Van Twyver? Um, I agree. What I think we should do with this, uh, I approve uh, changing will to shall. And in the future, shall is a, mo is a more a stronger word. There's no variation. You shall do that. You, you don't just probably will do it. You shall do it is a stronger word. What I think needs to be done is that we approve this GBEB as with that word change and the red document, red words here, and then send it back to, um, to policy for uh, Ms. O'Gara to update it with anything that she need, thinks that should be added to this policy because of the, that other uh, document that was approved by the state on ethics. Right. You, can I? Well, no, it doesn't have to go back to HR. I can, but I think that it could be handled here in, in policy, and, and Ms. O'Gara fills in what she needs, thinks needs to be done. Uh, or uh, you can send it back to HR. I don't, it doesn't matter. 
Are you uh, recommending that we table this and have Ms. O'Gara? No, I don't think we need to table it. I think, I think that we can, uh, to comply with the state requirement, we get this statement in here and then later deal with the uh, document. Uh, I'm surprised that she didn't bring that up anyways as far as policy, required policy changes. I mean, that's usually what happens is that uh, in the past, that if something comes down from the state, then uh, the respected per the person's, you know, that area of, of knowledge recommends, hey, we need to make a policy change. So uh, I don't see any any problem with with bringing it back. So so you just want to bring it back to this committee? Is that it? Um, what I'm saying is that we approve this tonight with those that one change word change and, and the red section in here. And then you talk to Ms. O'Gara and ask her what policies need to be changed because of that document that was uh, approved by the state on ethics. Okay. I thought someone had their I hand did. up. I um, did. Again, Ms. O'Gara did look at this and agreed um, with the red um, information in there with the actions by employees, officers of the school district. She actually... Um, agreed to put that sentence in. She vetted this already. She looked at it and said, yes, it needs to go in. To go back to her to say, yes, it needs to go in. I don't believe anybody suggested that. Oh, I thought. I said, with this one word change, will to shall, and the red section here uh, to prove this with that, those two changes in it, then go and talk to Mrs. O'Gara about uh, there may be other policies that need to be changed because of that ethics one, so there's no reason to hold this one up tonight. So, so you want to approve it with the uh, changes, but you also want Ms. O'Gara to, Wait to, a minute. to look me, it over? Let me make the motion. I move that we adopt GBEB with the word will in the first sentence changed to shall, and that the... Um, um, words in red, actions by any employee or officer of the school district who do not comply with this code of conduct will result in disciplinary measures up to and including termination. Okay. That's what I'm, I'm my motion. I'll, I'll second it. Okay. Okay. Um, I think we're ready to have a vote on it. Um, I, Go ahead, Ms. Hohen, so you haven't I just spoken wanted to on clarify, I think what um, Ms. Van Twyver is saying is we approve these changes tonight, send it to the full board, and as the secondary thing, maybe see if there's other changes that need to be made later. In so I don't think policies. she's trying to stall this from going to the full board mm -hmm. as you change it okay. tonight. Okay. That's all. So on the motion, do you understand the motion, Mr. Mosher? That's to appro approve this policy, GB... EB? As amended. As amended, right. With, she's, she wants to One change, word. change the, the word uh, will, to, will to shall. That's as amended, right? Right. Okay, so on the motion, um, Ms. Van Twyver? Yes. Mr. Mosher? Yes. Mr. Garino votes yes. Motion carries three to zero. Mr. Garino? Who, yes. For clarification, I think what Ms. Van Twyver is saying is we should make sure as we're going through policies that we are applying the code of conduct where it's appropriate as we're revising policies, not specific to this one. Right. There may yeah. be other policies that need changing because right. of that. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. I thought I was pretty clear. Okay. Um, moving on, we have policy DHA contracts. Signing authority. Um, Mr. Donovan. Okay, this, this was part of the uh, same procedure. It was listed in the audit with the um, fiscal management plan that we've now changed to just fiscal management or fiscal resources management. The other item listed there was contract signing authority. Um, so basically the only issue they wanted to talk, uh, they wanted some language in there related to non-competitive sole source uh, purchasing. We do do that. Um, the city does some of that also. So they just wanted some 
uh, specific language around if we're going to sole source it, when do we do that? Um, and we list here the three areas that we would sole source. Thank you, Mr. Donovan. Does anyone have any questions or comments regarding uh, policy DHA? Uh, right oh. now, I have none. Thank you, Mr. Mosher. Mr. Kaufman? I have a question, clarification. I'm sorry? No. Did you want to go? No. I have a, just a question. This is limited to, is this a contract signing authority? Is this limited to financial contracts, or is it any contract? Because sometimes there are contracts that don't exchange money, right? And there are certifications to the state that may or may not require board approval. I'm concerned about what happened last year where the superintendent and actually our former board president made certification to the state about things that did not happen, which the state took as something that happened because it was signed, falsely signed. And my concern is that the School Administrators Association has essentially said that if a school administrator has uh, authorization to sign for grants or other things that they can sign without even notifying the board that things have been approved. Now, and that would be an instance where it was non-monetary. The board has separate policies that say certain financial limits require review by the finance committee and or the board, depending upon the amount. So I'm concerned that this be limited to financial contracts and not, and that other contracts or signatory requirements be brought forth either to the finance committee or the board in general as it relates to something like the certification that we had with the general assurances. I'm just, I'm very concerned about that. I think this is a blanket authority that needs to be, uh, have, some, have some regulation, if I can use that word, around it. Ms. Uh, Ms. Raymond. Okay, I have two responses to that. First of all, um, repeating allegations that have been debunked is really inappropriate. Oh, they're true. They're true. They're not, true. not the way that you have One represented them. Um, secondarily, call me a liar and not speaks. allow me Mr. to refute. Kaufman. Mr. One Kaufman, at a time, please. Mr. Kaufman, I am incredibly tired of having conversations with people about casting negative aspersions on other members of the board. It is against our policies. If you continue to do it, I will sanction you. Do you understand? We are not doing this anymore. There Can you see no that sanctions. I am getting incredibly angry about it? There are no sanctions. Okay, I will, right. I will move to you, censure we, you. We voted. All right, all right. Ms. Right. Order, 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 order. Can disrespect Mr. Stop Kaufman. the public. Stop talking. And this Kaufman. board doesn't Mr. take any Kaufman, action against Mr. please you. stop talking, okay? Mr. Please Kaufman. Please stop talking right now. Once Please again. Do not have the floor. Once again. To you, the chair. You're, you're out of order. Down. Ms. Van Twyver, you're out of order. One person speaks at a time, please. That's what I was trying to get done because Thank you, you two were speaking Thank at you. the same time. Thank you. Okay. I, I apologize, ahead, Mr. Raymond. Gorino, for trying to speak Go ahead. over you. Go ahead. Finish, please. That was rude. Are, are you Once uh, again, you are casting out allegations on others. That matter was voted on. And I believe if we look back in the minutes, you will find that you have also behaved in a similar manner. Now. I have uh, never cursed out a member of the public. Stop talking and do not interrupt. Howard. I have never do not interrupt. cursed a member do of the public. Do not interrupt. Do not interrupt. Mr. Garino, please don't raise your voice. I am raising my voice because this gavel. gentleman does not understand. Have a gavel I don't have a use. gavel here. He's not listening to the gavel. One person speaks at a time, please. Absolutely ridiculous. I now, there are instances where individuals on this board have sworn and used curse words during meetings that are on record. They're in the minutes. So for someone to then yell at another member for doing so or try and sanction another member for doing so, I find um, just the height of hypocrisy. Now, to the other issue. I happen to agree with Mr. Kaufman that using, two, using contracts in this nature is um, inconsistent within this particular policy. The first line says contract slash purchase orders. I believe we could rectify Mr. Kaufman's concerns if we simply used that 
phrase contract slash purchase orders consistently throughout the document because then it would be clear that you're referring to contracts in relation to purchasing. Okay. Is there anyone else uh, on the committee or that wants to speak? I'm a little confused. Would you please say that again, what you're asking for? Yes. Mr. Kaufman suggested that simply using the word contracts was too broad of a term. And I noted that on the very first sentence, it says contracts slash purchase orders, which to me says that that's what this document is talking about when we're talking about signing authority. I would suggest that we simply use that phrase contracts slash purchase orders instead of just the word contracts for the rest of the document. That's fine with and me. And that would resolve the question of which contracts are um, this covers. Mr. Moshe, do you have any um, comments on that suggestion to, uh, to replace contracts with contracts slash purchase orders? Well, as a member of the finance and ops, I uh, look at this and I say that uh, uh, that first sentence tells about the, the whole story. Contract slash purchase orders. Okay. It will be approved by the Finance Ops Committee before award and referred to the full Board of Education for their approval before award. <clears throat> I see that uh, exactly what it says, and uh, I have no problem with it. There's, uh, uh, any other reference in there to, uh, to contracts has nothing to do with uh, any other labor or any other contract of employment or otherwise. It has contracts, purchase orders, so, period. So, okay, so you would, you would have no changes to it, to this document, or, or you would be okay with the change? For, I would have no changes to the... Uh, no, no changes to the document, okay. Thank you. Ms. Van Twyver? Thank you. Mr. Donovan, um, just because it says contracts slash purchase orders in the first paragraph, does not say to me that that applies to the whole thing. So are you, in a, uh, are you opposed or do you agree with uh, Ms. Uh, Raymond's suggestion of doing, changing all the uh, contracts to contracts slash purchase orders? Well, I guess my first point, this is in D section, which is fiscal management. So yep. to me, that assumes that we're talking fiscal, you know, contracts, we're talking about dollar amounts, we're talking about, so those are contracts with dollar amounts assigned to them. Mm -hmm. To be honest with you, um, those are the kind of contracts I deal with. Most contracts are associated with dollars. I, I, maybe there's been one or two other types of contracts. I probably wouldn't even review those. Um, you know, I would assume the superintendent or the legal department or somebody would deal with a, a contract that does not involve dollars, whether, you know, maybe a, with our tie-in with the city, there aren't a lot of those. Yeah, I, I think you, you made a big point there, the fact that this is in the financial section of our policies. Yes. Um, so I don't think it's necessary to do this. Okay. Uh, Mr. Kaufman? Thank you. Thank you. Given what Mr. Donovan just said, perhaps the student, uh, the superintendent need not be referenced, and it's really the chief operating officer or the designee who deals with these things. And to Mr. Donovan's point, the super doesn't get involved in this. Maybe the word superintendent should be the chief business administrator slash whatever we chief operating officer. So, so I think that uh, members of this committee, Ms. Van Twyver and Mr. Mosher are in agreement that it's, uh, it's okay the way it is. So are there any, anyone else add anything to this? Ms. Van Twyver? I move to accept policy DHA as uh, amended on the sheet that was in our packet in the red section, edits to be made and sent forward to the full board for approval. Okay, on the, uh, on the motion, uh, Mr. Ms. Van Twyver? Yes. Mr. Mosher? Yes. Mr. Greeno votes yes. Motion carries three to zero. Mr. Greeno, did you second that motion? No. I will second it. I'll, I'll reverse everything in reverse, and I will second it. We're pretty much in agreement, so it's consensus. Um, okay, so that's DH 
a. Um, and last but not least, proposed DK, time and effort. And uh, this is also provided in the packet. And um, would someone from admin like to speak to this? Certainly. Thank um, you, Mr. Donovan. In the monitoring report, it was <coughs> no, noted number eight. Um, time and effort, most people say, what, what do you mean by time and effort? It's a term used when dealing with federal funds and federal grants that the individuals that work on the federal grants are in fact aware that they work on a federal grant. Um, uh, with us, most of the people that work on federal grants charge work fully for that federal grant. Um, there are other instances and in other places where they might spend half their time on a federal grant, half the time with the operating budget. We do have that with a few people. Um, and then you'd find in with federal contractors where people would work on multiple projects um, during any given week. And therefore, you'd need to have sort of a time card where you show how many hours you work on each one of those uh, federal projects. So this was just, um, they noted that we didn't have anything written down. We did have a time and effort form that we would have people sign, um, typically on an annual basis. They're requesting now this be, is becoming more of an issue. So they want us to A, have a policy slash procedure in place, and B, um, to make sure that this is done on a more regular basis. And the regularity of it will be dependent upon how, uh, if it's charged to a single grant, or if, if, if an individual is charged to a single grant, we'll do it twice a year. And if, if, they, if they're half and half, if, I guess, let me, let me stop for a second. <laughs> oh. um, we'll, do it, we'll do it once or twice a year, depending on whether they uh, work for the grant full-time or not. We don't have, at this point in time, someone that works, uh, you know, a day a week for a federal grant. If we did, then we would probably have to put together uh, something using the time card system. But Go ahead. To, to Go give ahead. a practical example, if we have five Title I teachers that work completely under the Title I grant, we just verify that they are working a certain number of hours during the course of the year twice, and it's a verification that yes, in fact, they do understand they're being paid under Title I, and yes, they are working the hours that Title I is being charged. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Van Twyver? Um, Mr. Donovan, this policy DK only applies to federal grants, people work. Then may I suggest that we uh, improve the uh, title to be time and effort slash federal grants? for federal grants? Um, you could, I mean, the first sentence does say all employees are paid in full or in part with federal funds. Yep, I so know that, that but it, in the title it should be there, I think, for uh, when you're looking online for uh, a topic. Sorry, I, so you mean just, you could time and effort, parentheses, federal funds, something like that? F yeah, that'd be fine. Parentheses would be fine with me. Okay, does anyone else on the committee have any um, objections to changing the title to add in parentheses federal funds? Mr. Mosher, you okay with that? Uh, I'm okay with it, but uh, I think that uh, putting it as uh, well slash federal funds, that uh, that would say a lot. Because I am familiar with, uh, with the requirements because when I was the uh, superintendent of the mechanical department and uh, uh, for the B&M, uh, when I had uh, people working on different projects, we had to document the time that we they spent on the different uh, projects so that uh, the, uh, the amount of salary that they received would be equitable to the amount of time and effort that was put into the particular project. So I got no problem with it, really. Thank you, Mr. Mosher. Mr. Kaufman? Thank you. I have a question for Mr. Donovan. In the first bullet, it talks about um, this whole process being supported by a system of internal control. So I'm curious, is that something, I mean, you talked about essentially how um, integrated the city 
and the school district are in a lot of different ways. So I'm just curious, is, is, is this a, would we be using the facility, these are federal grants, so I don't know if it's, is it we, the school district, who needs to develop these controls? Is it in conjunction with the city? Is there overlap because they have a whole, they get a lot of funding as well. We're gonna have a shared grant writer, so I, I imagine there'll be more and more of that. And then I have a follow-up question. Well, I, I, I think this speaks, you know, a system of internal control. That's our accounting system, our loss and accounting system. We have for each federal grant, we have specific charge numbers so that you can see all the costs that go in there. So that exists right now. All right, thank you. That answers my question. Thank you. Okay. Mrs. Van Twyver? I have one more question. Um, DK, did, um, was that research to make sure we don't have a, a duplicate or complies with? Um, I did not put the DK on. I think Ms. Kinsella did. Yeah. She would have checked then. Um, Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. I move to um, approve policy DK with a change in the title to include parenthesis federal funds parenthesis and send it forth to the full board for approval. I'll second. Okay, on the motion to approve policy DK, Ms. Van Twyver? Yes. Mr. Mosher? Yes. Mr. Guarino votes yes. Motion carries three to zero. Okay. Um, Ms. Ms. Uh, Raymond and then Ms. Van Twyver. Go ahead. Oh, thank you. I just have a quick question. I was looking at this um, federal fiscal monitoring report and on the back page it had a list of corrective items, uh, actions, and by my reckoning we've got four out of the five. Correct. We have another to, to do. I just didn't have time to get them all for this meeting. But yes, there's the, uh, I believe it's the equipment. Yeah, uh, inventory management. Yes, yes, okay. that, that will come next month. Okay. Great, thank you. Ms. Fitzpatrick. Um, Mr. Grano and I had also spoken because we do have a backlog of policies that we need to bring forward. I think we're going to plan an additional meeting. We talked about that. Mm -hmm. Yes, we, we'll, we'll do that. Um, so members of this committee should know that we're, we, we will add another policy committee uh, meeting um, because of the backlog. But Ms. Van Twyver, you had a your hand up? Yeah, I wanted to ask, what does the C stand for in CFR? It's something federal Code rule? Federal Code? Code of Federal Regulations. Well, thank, thank you, you, Mr. Mr. Mosher. Mosher. Okay. So that brings us to the bottom of our agenda. We have nothing else on the agenda. I would uh, entertain a motion to um, adjourn. I move so to adjourn. Okay, on Second. the motion to adjourn, Ms. Van Twyver? Yes. Mr. Mosher? Yes. Mr. Garino votes yes. Meeting is adjourned at 8.03. Mr. Mosher, have a good night. Thank you very much. And we'll be talking to you soon. Very good, thank you. Yep.